All right. In the bottom right, you all know him. You love him. He's Team Liquid's Harstum. In the top left, as the red Protoss, we have Cascades, Skillis, who's pretty damn good at PvP himself, so... To be honest, I actually, I'm thinking that Skillis wins this. I know everyone always, you know, they want to talk up, they want to cheer for Harsum. And, uh, well, I definitely understand that. He's a very easy person to cheer for. He hasn't necessarily been making it to the round of fours in these cups, where Skillis has at least made one. What is the difference with EBT and ESL? There is no difference, it's actually the same thing. ESL is actually no longer an acronym, right? Is that is that the thing? Is that what we're, we're saying now? It used to be an acronym for Electronic Sports League, but it's no longer. It's actually just like, it's just called ESL. So the EPT has, is an acronym for ESL Pro Tour. And usually you don't put an acronym into an acronym, but if one's not an acronym, then, yeah. Anyways. All right, so Harsum is going to be using the pylon. Looked like he was, but nope, not going to. Skillis immediately finding this pylon is such a nice thing. He can actually just keep tabs on it now. He might leave and come back, but he'll probably come back. Because Harsum's probe is still suspiciously close to that. So there you go. There you go. And if Harsum was planning on using this, you just can't anymore. I mean, if you're trying to hide your, your structure, you know the probe's going to come back um, and scout it. You know if you wait for the probe to actually leave, it'll be far too late to place on a structure and actually make it worthwhile. And with this early of a scout, you also really do not want to just go, okay, you know what, F it, I'm going to put it down anyways. That's, that's how you just lose the game immediately. Especially because Skillis isn't, you know, he's not being all willy-nilly about that scout. It's possible after scouting it like he did, he could have gone into Stalker Sentry and been like, haha, just took away all the power of any proxy you could have done, any hidden technology you could have done. But the safer call would be going to Stalkers, which is actually what he did. Harsum went for two Adepts into Stalker Sentry, so he is going to be looking to do some damage here. Scala's looking around for the uh, probe, actually finds the probe. Unfortunately, is not going to find the Adepts, and that's actually more so what he was going to be looking for. Very unlikely there's going to be a third, yeah, third pylon out in the map. But he finds the Adept of two Stalkers long before they have the ability to shade into his main. That's kind of the ideal. He went to two more Stalkers anyways. And in fact, like, Skillis has gotten a Robo already. So this Robo could just go into an attack. Um, which Harsum is not going to be able to scout too easily. Now, seeing a lack of a Nexus when he has already gotten his, and it's actually pretty damn close to done... He probably figures there's an attack on the way, but we're still waiting for, yeah, that third gateway to be put down in there. It finally is. Skillis is going to commit to the one base, something that Harsum should be figuring out. He even manages to save his adepts, perhaps for a future attempt at harassment, or maybe even just to join in with the attack. But despite the lack of knowledge of the main base, Harsum just seeing the not nexus gives him a big clue as to what this is. Could it be a one base Stargate? Yeah, you know, again, holding the two oracles up and waiting for an opportunity, but the first thing that's really going to kill you, that will actually kill you, is going to be a one base push, Robo and Gateways included. So probably take care of that first and foremost, which is exactly what he's doing. He even catches two stalkers, that one very, very weak. He might as well just go ahead and consider it dead. And a shield battery in the natural. And another shield battery might be the safest thing he could have done, but he already has his own robo with an immortal out here. And Skillis, not sure one base attack is really what's going to work out here. Force fields from both players being put down to try and capture the immortal. One uh, was slightly better. Slightly better, but Harson was able to pull his back. Now a second shield battery is on the way. He was unable to actually just stop this, nip it in the bud. As close as he got to doing that, it hasn't happened here. So he has to take this very, very seriously. Harsum's second immortal pops out and immediately into a warp prism to help juggle his immortals. Or his sentries or anything really that gets popped forward with the uh, force fields that are available from his opponent. That's always really nice. Immortal shield's gonna be popped. There's the force field to bring them forward. Both immortals actually not doing too well here. One dies, the other one missed a couple of shots, being pushed back and juggled like it was, but it doesn't matter. 
top side is going so much better as Harsum's defensive capabilities are too strong. Scaleless is forced to tap out. Sometimes it's all about whether you take out the Immortals, but if you take out both the Immortals, but you only have two Stalkers left over, I mean, it's not really a win, is it? Scaleless's army was just too small. Harsum too prepared. Too prepared by him. Thank you, old Abysmiliard, for the 10 month resub. Just lurking. Hi, y'all. EBT is European Protoss Tournament. Yeah. That's what it should be named. Can't believe how many people play Protoss. Don't you all know it's the, uh, it's the weak race? Never wins any tournaments, man. Are there any non protoss in the round of eight? Yeah, there's a guaranteed Zerg. There's a guaranteed Terran. And, uh. Here, Marine and Bly could still make it into the round of eight. If you guys didn't see, the TSL5 replay pack is out. I might cast some of the games that happened on Sunday. The uh, the Sunday I wasn't casting, the one with Dana and Arati. Those are the cooler ones. Oh my god, are you real? Sorry, I just read something totally unrelated to StarCraft. We'll talk about it in a second if we don't have anything else interesting. In the bottom left, he's up one. He is the Protoss Harsum. In the top right is the red Protoss. We have Skillus. So I was reading my timeline, as one does. And, uh... For those who don't know, Overwatch had hero pools implemented, Is that, and that means that they could only choose every week. Every week. They could only choose from a select number of heroes in competitive play, and that included like, their ranked ladder as well. It was mostly a fix for their Overwatch League, but yeah, ranked ladder was concluded. So, everyone was like, yay, something different, we're gonna try it, because yeah, it was something that was suggested for a long time by the community. Well, that was, like, at the beginning of Overwatch League. And with, like, all the coronavirus stuff, like, it, you know, it's been interrupted and whatnot, so... Really, it doesn't feel like it's been that long since they've experimented with this different way of competitive play. Well, today they announced that they were abolishing hero pools. The, uh, the worst haters of uh, Overwatch said that was an inevitability. People were initially... You know, people who like Overwatch were initially like, ah, oh, that's a good thing to try, and then eventually we fell out of love with it. But, uh, I don't hate nor love Overwatch League. I find it fascinating for a few different reasons, both negative and positive. I just find it so funny that, I, I, like, it, it was, it just, it just feels like it was tried for, like, months, you know? It just feels like it was, like, such a band-aid solution. It was such a band-aid because they couldn't actually balance their heroes. And they had to admit that it wasn't- it didn't make it any more fun, didn't make it any more balanced, like, it, it still sucked. <laughs> now it's like, well now, well now, what do they do now? They really, really don't want to put vetoes and bans in, because they don't think they have enough heroes to do so. Because that's obviously one of the things that, like, MOBAs do, but... ay ay ay. The continued drama of the Overwatch League, that's... That's my crack, you guys. That's my- that's my drug. <clears throat> Thanks for casting, CG, OBC, cast, WCS. Well, WCS is no longer a thing. 
I did cast WCS. Uh, it's not actually a thing anymore. When you're talking about the EPT, I have already casted Katadite, so... I know typically when people say that stuff, they just mean, I hope you see you casting more offline tournaments. But every now and again, I get someone who's like, man, I should really hire you for main events. And I'm like, well, I've done a bunch of main events. And they're like, really? <laughs> and you're like, um, okay. All right, what do we got here going on for the actual builds? Uh, of course, the uh, notable scouting that happened from both players to find the pylons. Harsum did hide his pylon, which Skillis did not find. Skillis also unable to get a scout in the main base. Still scouted the Nexus timing, which is actually about as much of a scout as you really expect to get. Until the Hallucinated Phoenix <laughs> spoke too soon. I to get right into the main base. Could go after a sentry. Gonna go after the probes, though. Only got two. Really not too bad there. Well, maybe four actually. Okay. Maybe five. Yeah, let's get uh, five and get out of there. Well, and by get out of there, I mean die. <laughs> five and then die. Still put Skillis at a five worker lead because he got similar time Nexus. He also got a scout on the forge. So he knows this is headed into a macro game. So he also gets his own forge. Harsum had a hallucinated phoenix, scout the nexus timing, as well as the robo, and... Oh, not the forge, because that was only put down a couple of seconds ago. So, Harsum would love to see that. He's been trying to get in with his own adepts, but a little less successful. And the game continues on. Harsum's down six probes, but he does have a faster plus one. And now faster twilight council. Now, there's a reason he has a faster twilight council, and that's because he never got a robo. There's no robo, there's no immortal production... Do keep that in mind, because this might seem like it's faster technology. It's not probably not as good technology as having Immortals. It uh, can be tricky, of course, but we'll wait to see what he actually gets from that Twilight Console. Adepts get into the main base, finally! Force field stops maybe two more probes from dying. As we only have four go down, it might have been six. And that was not quite equalizing damage from Harsum, especially because it happened later on in the game. But it was a nice use of his two Adepts. More Lucid Phoenix. War Prism actually on the way. We might just have it for Warp Prism Harassments. I don't see any more gateways going down, and I don't think he'd go for an attack, especially as he slaps down the Twilight Council. But he knows that Harsum doesn't have a Robo, and he's got to be trying to figure out what that means for the game for him. He sees a Robo now being slapped down. That Twilight Council was, in fact, for Blink. I thought it was probably going to be, but I was like, do you actually even have a Resident Glaives build that does a setup like this? Apparently not. It is just Blink. And plus one is going to be slightly faster than Skillis. It may actually be uh, negligible. It'll be a big deal. So if Harsum's going to be going into Blink and also a Dark Shrine, hey, 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 we also might see Robotic Spay put down at a, at a time. Skillis goes for charge, following up with Temple Archives, no doubt, getting an appropriate number of gateways to survive any attack, and also to do an attack. Now, he sees that his opponent is getting a faster third. I think he's already figured out just by the amount of scouting he's been doing. And wow, talking about scouting, he's also getting some harassment done. Adepts in the natural, Adepts scouting the third, and Immortals in the main base taking out the pylons. Going to delay Blink here, which is quite important. As he wants to be able to save... Oh no, oh no, he actually fucked this up. Oh no, oh my god, he's going to try and make the best out of a bad situation, but this is actually really not good. Oh, doesn't save that one Immortal, but he is going to save the one other Immortal as well as the War Prism. Ooh, okay, that was a little too scary. The reason I say that he kind of fucked up there is because as soon as you let the Stalkers in range of your Warp Prism, you've kind of already messed up, right? Because the Warp Prism has, what, five pickup range, is it now? It has that pickup range. You can always have the Immortals even a little bit kind of scouting ahead, right? And the Warp Prism always stays back here. As soon as you realize Stalkers are trying to go after the Warp Prism, you pick up and you say goodbye, see you later. But as soon as you let those Stalkers actually in range, you can't really go back for your Immortals either or... Yeah, the War Prism gets shot down and your Immortals are trapped. But uh, maybe Skillis realized he could actually make something out of that. Maybe he realized, like, hey, these Immortals could actually beat your Stalkers. Like, I'm actually going to take this fight. And maybe that was the right call. He did take down quite a few Stalkers for the one Immortal. And he still kept an Immortal and the War Prism alive, which is very, very important. Because he is looking for an attack. He's got plus one. He's actually working on armor now. 
And he does have a third Nexus on uh, the way back home, but Harsim has not had time to really build up a decent soccer count. He got the faster third, thinking that he would control the map. I mean, that's usually what the Blink player does. The Blink wasn't that fast, and there's just not that many stalkers. I mean, look how bad Harsim's army is compared to Skillis. Skillis has the best Protoss army possible. Harsim also lost his Observer, but I guess he knows that Skillis' Observer is over here on this side of the map, and that's... Well, okay. I thought it'd make it a little complicated, but apparently not. <laughs> I was like, Skillis, well, he could always build an Observer back at home. DTs were going to kill the economy of Skillis, but Harsim had no more army, I guess, and just taps out. Just taps out. Probably hoping his DT harassment would have been able to buy him some time, or that Skillis would play defensive. But instead, Skillis was actually very aggressive. The Adepts. The Immortal Drop. It all worked in his favor for the final final punch, man. The one-two punch. It was pretty good. Thank you, SKT1 Guru. It was nice to get to say. Is Overwatch League still pulling reasonable viewership? It's really hard to say. Um, I am of the opinion that it has never pulled enough viewership for the amount of money that goes into it, but the truth is, is that we are never very, we are never the people who actually can tell if something's successful or not. 30,000 viewers on YouTube might seem like a laughable amount compared to, again, how much money they put into this damn esport, but to them, it actually might be their expectation. And YouTube is totally fine with those numbers. Um, yeah, who knows? Purity and Industry is the last map here. It's interesting. In the top 12 o'clock position, we have Harstum. And in the 3 o'clock position, we have Skidos. I thought it sounded familiar, Arjun. I was like, hold on. I know this guy. He's in my he's in my Twitch chat. Doesn't usually type like that. I had forgotten. I had forgotten. And sometimes YouTube is just a sometimes it's a treasure. Cause some people are just so, so dumb. Other times it's a black hole where they're only slightly dumb, so you feel the need to correct them, and then you realize that you're being sucked into a black hole of stupidity, and you're just gonna get dragged down with them. My rule lately has been two comments to a YouTube comment, right? If they actually respond to my first comment, I'll respond to them, and then I never look at it again, which is easy enough to do. They've changed it so that, like, in showing they don't show YouTube comments that you've responded to in your dashboard anymore. They have a filter that's automatically on that will filter out comments you've already responded to. So if I am actually engaged in an interesting conversation or answering someone's questions, I easily forget <laughs> and I feel bad. But on the ones that I'm just like, yeah, I'm done with this anyways, then it's a nice filter. I actually had a pseudo-argument with someone on the Pylon Show VOD. Which I also haven't checked after the second comment, but... Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Alright, so... One gate... One base stargate. One base stargate. Harsim going for the Oracle first. 
Here at the industry, obviously you're quite close by air, but that's why there's um, slower downers. That's what we're going to call them. Inhibitor zones. And Skillis goes for what is actually sizing up to be an expansion. It looks like an expansion with this pylon here, but perhaps not. Two stalkers going aggressively forward finds Harsum's one stalker. That was just kind of out uh, checking for this, but kind of got bamboozled. <laughs> Skillis did not go the long way around. Skillis has a pylon prepared to set down from this probe. I can almost guarantee that. And uh, Harsum needs to prepare for a potential attack. He's got four stalkers coming up here now. Harsum's number is looking quite low, but ooh, no shield battery. The shield battery was great against a two-base Stargate, but not against a one-base. Seven probes go down, but the soccer numbers here are not convincing for Harsum. Four soccers to two now, but the probes are being pulled. They are choked in. That was a good pull away there from Harsum. Just enough to make it work. He's waiting for Warp Gate to finish, and then he can warp in a couple more. Shield battery is done, but the, the Oracle die? It did, actually. That's pretty important. Now the shield battery will cover Skillis' main base, and he can focus entirely on the push. And Zealot's gonna die, but it was a hero. Bought some, bought some time there. Adepts get into the main base. That's a little worrying, but an Oracle pops out to help, and that's better than letting the Adepts just continue to do damage. That is coming from the War Prism that Skillis... That's the only thing he used his Robo for, was to build a War Prism. But if it works, it works. This Adept is gonna go down. He's gonna transform the War Prism, though. Decide not to. Oracle's not quite out of energy yet, and he's also been microing on the front lines. Harsum has the reinforcements a little bit faster with the Warp Prism again, not actually in warp mode. But this is still very scary, very micro-intensive. Both players without a Nexus, Harsum cancelled his. It is possible that Skillis macros out of this, but he's not going to have to as Harsum just taps out. Too few units, and with the Oracles out of energy, there's just nothing he could do. GG.